happy Mother's Day to all of the parents of the next generation. Also, the fur parents. And of course, this channel belongs to the plant parents. It even says so in the banner. Now I'm filming this on Mother's Day. I actually wanted to change trajectory completely from the video that I was going to do this week because I went to the flower shop and I bought these. And as I was looking at which ones I was going to get, a woman said, oh, if you're getting those for your mum for Mother's Day, I wouldn't waste your money. You know, once the flowers are done, they don't bloom again. And that is a myth. I was kind of appalled that these myths are still out there perpetuating in the community. Thousands and thousands of these orchids are brought into all types of shops to be sold for Mother's Day gifts. And there'll be thousands of mothers who receive these as a Mother's Day gift. And if you've clicked on this video, you may be receiving one of these for the first time. You may be receiving it again, because maybe the last one didn't really do so well and died. Trust me, we've all been there. Or maybe you got it and it hasn't bloomed since and you're not sure why. Don't throw these plants out. You can enjoy them year after year after year. And if that's what you're here to see, that's the topic of today and I've got you hooked up. So let's, let's get on with the intro. Now before we get into addressing these guys over here, which is the subject of today's video, because not everybody would have received one of these, what we call Phalaenopsis or moth orchids. If you've received something that looks a little like one of these two, maybe it's even bigger than this. They come in various sizes. These are Cymbidium orchids. We are not covering these today, but I have something for you. But you may have also received something that looks a little bit like this, with these bulbous, structures down here and leaves on the top. It might be an Oncidium. We're not covering all different types of orchids. There are lots of them, but I have a little secret. I have a second channel. It's called Joyous Orchids. And there, I talk a lot about my orchid collection. So I'll put a link to the description if you're interested in orchids. You'll see my entire Phalaenopsis collection. There's a lot more vlog style content on there. And of course, it'd be really cool if you all gave me a follow over there too, if you want to. You're certainly not obliged. Now back to the Phalaenopsis. Now, if you got a Mother's Day present, it probably, tags are falling out everywhere. If you received an orchid for Mother's Day, it probably came in a container that looks like this or possibly like this. I'm gonna keep it at the beginner level, but first I'm gonna show you what you're shooting for because in a year or two's time, you're going to probably want your orchid to look a little like these guys. Now I won an award with this orchid with my local orchid society back in March. And isn't she pretty? She's finishing up her flower spike. This one bloomed in summer, which is quite odd for these orchids. These normally bloom in autumn. You'll notice that you can buy these all year round and they're in bloom. Well, that's because growers have a little trick that they can do to induce the blooming, but their normal cycle is not, generally speaking, not to bloom in summer. There are always exceptions. This is one of them. This is what should be happening Right now, in autumn, in most Phalaenopsis collections, we have a growing flower spike. And you'll notice that there are lots of what we call aerial roots. There are also tons of roots in this pot. Now, these roots are wild. They grow all over the place. And you'll notice that this one is in bark. That's all I'm using is 100% orchid bark, but more on that in a second. And when I say they can grow wild, they can grow wild. The other thing you'll notice is that these are in clear plastic pots with holes in them. Now in this case, this is a cheap plastic pot. I actually put holes in them myself with a soldering iron. Um, I'm doing that to get lots of oxygen in. This one crawled out of its hole and is wrapping itself happily around the pot. I love it like that. It's crazy. You've also got roots that are growing out here. Tons of roots in this pot. That's what we're shooting for. Now, this pot has a little bit of perlite through it in addition to the bark. I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but a lot of these growing tips are active. They're actively growing. And we can tell that because at the end of the tip, it changes color. It's a lot lighter, or in some cases, it might be a little bit darker. If there's a bit of purple in the, in the orchid, it might show up in the root. But the vast majority of them are green, and they will be a lot, the tips will be a much lighter color green than the rest of the root. 
If that's your orchid, it's what we call active root tips. Now, I always have fun getting this one back in a pot because I don't want to squish the roots. The roots are precious. Roots are precious. We want lots of roots. So this video is all about getting you from this brand new orchid, new to your home, not in bark, probably no gr growing root tips, stressed beyond a joke, but they are blooming for you. So what's the first thing that you should do? The very first thing you should do when you bring these orchids home is two words, absolutely nothing. They need time to acclimate to your home. If you think about the journey of an orchid, it's come from a nursery with hot and humid conditions. It's been moved and shipped and bought at an auction and then put on sale. All that activity stresses these plants out. You need to let it rest and acclimate to your environment. Enjoy these blooms. Enjoy them. It is the best thing. Doing nothing right now except keeping the moss moist or keeping the media moist. Whatever kind of media it is, it might be moss, it might be something else. Typically in most places this is how they come. So I'm talking to this. Keep the moss a little damp and just enjoy the blooms. Eventually those blooms will start to die. It's actually happening on this spike here. These blooms are starting to go over. They'll get a little soft and droopy and then they'll drop. Now, on a normal year where the orchid has not been induced to bloom just so it can go on sale, once the orchid has finished blooming, cut the flower spike. Now you'll want to cut it at the very base as far as you can do. Do it with some sharp scissors, make a clean cut, throw the stem away. That's going to tell the orchid we're finished flowering, it's time to work on vegetative growth. Most of these orchids are winter bloomers. They start their spikes in autumn, and then they grow all the way through autumn, part of the way through winter, and they'll bloom in winter. They may stay blooming for a good couple of months, but once you cut the flower spike, let's say that happens at the end of winter, that will mean that the plant will go into vegetative growth. That's a key time. Vegetative growth means two things. It will work on roots and it will work on leaves. Sometimes it will work on both at the same time. And what we want to see is vegetative growth because we want these plants to grow and get stronger because the next year they'll bloom even better. If good care is given, these will bloom better every year. And you only need to go on Instagram to see these things in beautiful displays. Or you can go to an orchid shop. But your plant is a bit stressed. It needs time to adjust. And these plants need more time to adjust than most plants. But this is what you're aiming for. These plants are not stressed. They're really, really happy. So that is what we're gonna try and get you to. Gosh, they're so beautiful. So yeah, dispelling myths. I was so sad to hear that um, there are people that still believe that these things don't bloom again because they certainly do. Vegetative growth will begin and it's likely that the very first thing that this plant's gonna wanna do is put out some new roots. New roots will come from the base of the orchid. You'll see them poking out here. It may take a little while before you can tell that they're a new root, but you'll get little root nubbins down at the corner, down at the base here. And at that point, once they're about a centimeter or two, that's when we repot this orchid. These roots and these roots have been grown in this medium. This medium, for those that don't know, we call this sphagnum moss. Very typically used to sell these orchids. You find them packed in sphagnum moss and packed tight, really, really tight. It's amazing how much moss you can pull out of these. You'd never get them back in. But that seems completely different to that. It is. That's very, very, very airy. These need a lot of oxygen. So ideally these don't go back into very, very, very tightly packed moss. Not for the new root system. This root system absolutely needs to be in tight packed moss. And the reason why is because they've been acclimated to it. They've grown in it. That's what they need. That's what they expect. And that's what they're used to. Where a lot of people go wrong is that they read that you need a, a light airy mix and then they take this orchid out, put it in its mix that they know or they read that they need and the roots die, they lose the orchid. And we don't want that to happen. That's why the best thing we need to do is save this root system. But the new root system, the new roots, we want them to grow in the medium that best suits the plant. At that point, we're gonna take out our plant and we're gonna put it in our new medium. Now I'm gonna talk about the bark mix as if, as on the assumption that we're gonna put it into that. You don't have to put it into that. There are other mediums, mediums that you can use. But again, I'm talking to beginners here. I really do recommend that you not go for all of the advanced stuff. I recommend you stick to bark 
a good quality bark that's not breaking down and then mix some perlite in there to help with moisture retention and aeration. For beginners, it's probably the best combination that you can do. Oh, I need a drink. So what's gonna happen is the new root system is going to touch that media and grow into that media. And it's gonna become very quickly acclimated to that new media. You may lose the old root system, but the transition period means the new roots are going to grow while the old roots die off. And what the goal is, is to make sure we've got new roots that can sustain the orchid once those old roots die off. You may not lose all of them. Some of them actually may transition. Overwhelmingly, the old roots probably will die. But if they don't, so another thing I do notice about is there's no growing tips on here, which I'm not really surprised. It's symptomatic of this orchid being stressed. Things stop growing, plant shuts down. It's also working on making sure that these blooms open. I'm not holding out for that because where I bought it was really cold. Maybe that these blooms, what we call blast. Bud blast simply means that it has buds, but they don't progress all the way to opening. But we're going to enjoy the blooms that we have. I have a specific project for these in mind, so I'm not really worried about anything but acclimating these guys to this home environment, allowing the blooms to bloom away, and then I'll be cutting the flower spikes. So I'm not going to remove this one. I'm just going to put this one over to the side. This is slightly damp. What worries me about this one? No drainage holes. That's not good. These have got drainage holes central. There's holes and strips all the way. No water is gonna get trapped in here. This is a risky period. So I do suggest that spraying the orchid roots and the moss just with a sprayer, just to keep the top damp is the way to go. You don't, oh. Seedling leaf. You don't want to pour water in here unless you pour water in here, let it sit for five, you know, five minutes or so, and then drain all of it out. But that's quite difficult when there's blooms on it. So I wouldn't be doing that. Just keep the top layer moist with a little sprayer. And that's about as best that you can do until we're ready to repot this. So that's my suggestion to get you through. So now root, root nubbins are starting to appear at the base of the orchid. Very, very exciting. They're say a couple of centimetres up to four or five. As long as they don't start to bury themselves into this older media, cool. The minute they do, time to take the orchid out. I'm gonna take this orchid out. Let's have a look at the root system to see how good or how terrible it actually, oh my goodness. Oh, oh it's stuffed in there. Oh my Lord. Oh, there we go. All the sphagnum moss. All right, so what have we got here? We've got a root system that's very green because this is damp. Oh, but we have got dead roots. See, this one is papery thin and I can pull away the outer layer. This is called the velamen. The outer layer, which soaks up all of the moisture, and I'm left with the, this is the actual root. It's actually technically called the steely. That's useless. That is dead. And you can see that again here. Pulling that off, pulling off the velamen. Some people call it velamen. And then we're left with the little steely. That's a dead root. How can you tell between live roots and dead roots? These should be bouncy and firm. If they're mushy or if they're brown and papery, like this one, they're no good. Let's pull off the sphagnum moss. I'm going to be putting this back into very, very tight sphagnum moss. Probably not in that pot. And I've done this a few times, so I kind of know what I'm doing. I always hope I know what I'm doing. Often I don't. I'm making it up. But anyway, I digress. We've got some green roots here. And when they're green like this, that means that they're hydrated. Now, when we're ready to unpot, remember, your orchid will be actively growing roots. They're a little bit longer. The new ones are about so long, anywhere between, you know, couple of centimetres, a few centimetres, five or six, you're going to cut off all the dead roots. Sterilise your cutting tools with either isopropyl alcohol or a 10% bleach solution. Cut away all the dead roots. You're not going to be needing them anymore. Leave the live ones on. Even though it's very likely that a lot of them will die, you need to leave them on because right now they're good. They're going to hydrate the plant. They're going to allow the plant to take up water and nutrients while the newer roots establish themselves and they will take over. This orchid was once in sphagnum moss, just like this one. Its oldest root system died off years ago. 
all of the new roots have acclimated and are happy with this happiest in this medium. Now let's talk about the wet dry cycle because once they've been moved into that medium over there or something a lot like that, we want to let them go completely dry and then water them again. Now this orchid got a water today. They got a bath of nutrients at the same time. And you can see in here that these have also, you can see that the roots are wet, they're a little bit dark green. Contrast that to these roots which have got a silver, they're dry. So once you see the, the whole pot is dry, the roots look like this, give it a good soak with water. And I mean a good soak. Ideally, water from the bottom. You don't want to have water getting into the crown or between the leaf joints of your orchids. It can rot. These are not meant to grow in this way. We put them in, in a pot to make it easier for us. But if you were to see this plant in the wild, then it would be hanging like this. So the water pours out why they don't generally die of rot because they're grown in their most natural habitat. Also why they get older, they tend to lean because it's in their nature to lean. They're leany plants, but we keep them upright. So we've got to protect the crown and we've got to protect the leaf joints. If you get some water in there, you know, blot it with a bit of paper towel and make sure that there's some good air circulation. You just don't want it to stay that way for any big length of time. Check out that root system, guys. It's just amazing. Roots, roots and roots. That's what we're going for. New roots, new media, very airy, very light. You can get these on Amazon or eBay or I don't have any in my shop, but you can get some. Orchid pots with drainage holes, a lot of drainage on the bottom and ideally holes on the side and make it clear. You want to see the roots. You need to see the roots. Otherwise, it's guesswork. Fertilizing. I personally recommend liquid fertilizer. Now, I use Growth Technologies Orchid Focus. I use it for my entire collection. It is a complete fertilizer. My suggestion is weak mix weekly. When it needs to be watered, every third watering, water it with fertilizer. Add a weak mix. Now that might be end up being every two weeks, that might end up being every 10 days. Um, it, it might be a little bit different, might be a little bit longer or shorter. That's okay. Weak liquid fertilizer. If you're using growth technology, orchid focus, then a weak solution every third water. Please don't use a regular fertilizer that you would use for other plants. Use an orchid specific fertilizer. The other fertilizers are very, very strong. In comparison to those plants, these plants aren't heavy feeders, which is why we always use an orchid specific fertilizer. Now, if you've got an orchid specific fertilizer, excellent. Doesn't really matter which one you use. My suggestion is to make up a solution that's one quarter strength, whatever is recommended on that bottle. Every third watering, water with the fertilizer. The other two waterings, plain water. We wait till all the roots and the media is dry and we water again, whenever that is. And that's the wet dry cycle. Hopefully at this point, your plant will start putting out more roots and it will probably even start making new leaves. That's great. That's exactly what we want. This looks like a mess. I'm just gonna put this back in here. I make messes all the time. So it's growing new leaves. Come autumn, everything goes well and you've done the right thing. And those roots have really rooted into that medium. Maybe you've even got a couple of these guys that stay outside the pot. That's okay. As long as you've got a few good roots in the pot, aerial roots are no problem. You don't have to panic and try and shove them into the pot. It's very, very natural for, for Phalaenopsis orchids to be root wild. They will grow roots all over the place. It grows leaves, it grows roots. You'll see those growing tips on the, on the ends of the root and it's going wonderful. Come autumn, you'll start to see a flower spike. It is possible it may skip a year. You may have to be patient and wait to the following year. Don't worry, your plant is acclimating to the changing condition. And it's really important to know that these guys will take a good year or two or two to settle in properly to your home environment. That's not unusual. I'm not sure people really understand. I'm here to tell you that if you don't get a blooming the following year, please don't think it's anything that you did. It's probably not. It's probably the orchid just going, I'm gonna work on some more vegetative growth. I'm not ready to put blooms out. Keep fertilizing. All year round, keep fertilizing. 
These guys have no dormancy period. They will continue growing all year. They're either working on a flower spike and blooming it out, working on vegetative growth, and the cycle begins again. And you can be pretty sure that you're on the way to enjoying this plant and these plants for many years into the future. These plants are going to thrive and do amazingly well in your care. You'll learn a lot about them along the way. They do talk to you, these beautiful things. And they're an absolute joy to grow. So if you got value from this, if you learnt something today, please do give us a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. It's a channel for plant parents after all. Hopefully you're a plant parent or thinking about becoming one. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.